Thank you all for attending this lecture. But before I start, I would like to quickly introduce myself. My name is Anton Elekhnaichus and I am a 3D generalist, working for Ringtail Studios located in Tallinn, Estonia. I work in 3D for more than 10 years and my experience comes not only from the game dev but also from advertising and architectural industries. I have worked on a different roles on such projects as Call of Duty, Destroy All Humans 2, Rage 2, The Quarry, Brimstone Sands and many many more. Today I would like to share my experience with you of how to make the correct character topology for the game, which can be then easily animated. I know that most of you have done this hundreds of times, however even experienced artists like you very often make the same common mistakes. For those who doesn't know what retopology means, retopology is the process of reducing polygon counts and creating a low poly model out of high poly one. Working in game production means you have to consider some modern rules in order to simplify animators work. If the character has the correct wireframe, it will also have the correct deformations. If the wireframe is not correct, the deformations will be broken and you will have to get back to the modeling again and make fixes which would be a waste of time. I am not going to cover the full body retopology due to the lack of time, but I am going to walk you through the most important parts. Let me show you the example of Chris Jones. I guess many of you are familiar with his masterpieces. The key of the correct retopology is to follow the structure of the muscle lines. This way, when the model is animated, the creases and folds will be in places where they naturally would. This makes the model look even more natural and organic. It can also mimic the appearance of the muscles moving beneath the surface of the skin. The process I'm going to show you is not fully invented by me. We always learn something from someone. The basic idea was taken from Danny Mac tutorials. I really like his easy workflows and I advise you all to watch his lessons. Okay, so let's get started. I always start doing retopology from the head. It's a really good source of workflow if you're focusing more on one section and then move to the next one. This way you focus on the key elements. These include the eyes, the muzzle, the mouth, the perimeter of the face and the ears. You do those sections first and then it's a lot easier just to connect them afterwards. I usually start from modeling the eyes. It doesn't have to be perfect at first. It's so much easier to re something if you have big polys, and it's more difficult and time-consuming to move vertices on high-density wireframe. After we've done the rough version of the low-res wireframe, we can add some resolution in order to finish the face. Hinge joints. Hinges are specific areas of consideration for topology, since a lot of deformation occurs here. When I talk about hinges, I mean things like elbows, knees, wrists, ankles, neck, fingers, and etc. These are the areas that bend. It's very important to have at least three loops around your hinges. The reason for that is with one loop, we have a bad deformations. With two loops, we have a bit better results, but the elbow still looks too sharp. With three loops or more, we have enough geometry for bending. However, in such places as elbows and knees, I recommend you to use full loops. Full loops are good for retaining shape and volume while bending, and increases the density of the localized geometry, which can be useful for adding details to the area. The same approach I also use for the knees. If you want to create full loops instead of free edge loops, it's very simple to modify your model. Find the center point of the elbow or the knee, then connect the edges around it, and finally get rid of angons, splitting them into the half.
In this example, we see two similar models. They look exactly the same, unless I turn on the wireframe. Now we start seeing the difference, especially in the hinge areas. The model on the left side looks just fine. Lots of artists make this type of wireframe, and it could sometimes work in the game, but not as well as the model on the right side. The poly count of the models is approximately the same, but the way these polygons are distributed is different. On the left side, the polygons are distributed equally. Especially this can be seen on the hands and legs. However, on the right side, the wireframe has more density in the place of elbows, knees and wrists. We can also notice that the wireframe on the right side tries to follow the shape of the muscles. So that's the results we should achieve. Rip gauge. Look at this beautiful example. When modeling characters like this, I would recommend to follow the shape of the rib cage. With this approach, it looks more realistic and it's also much easier to rig, since when you lean backwards, your ribs become more visible. The same for the scapula. Like the ribs, it can be useful to have the geometry that follow the shape of the scapula. Again, that makes it easier to rig and animate because the scapula moves around quite a lot. You can always fix your existing model. Delete the back faces. Now all you have to do is just follow the form of the scapula. And finally fill in the gaps. Now let's talk about the pelvis. For me this is one of the most important places in retopology, where people make many mistakes. Again, if you look at these two examples, you will see what I mean. This is extremely important to create the loop following the shape of the pelvis and the buttocks, because this will allow us to get nice clean deformations when the leg bends, which is obviously something that's going to happen a lot. Also notice on the right side, the density of the wireframe is higher in this area, comparing to the left one, because it will be pinching and stretching. I will show you in a second what I mean. On the left side we see that the formation is not as good as on the right side. The reason for that is lack of polygons and direction of the edge loops. If we look at the buttocks we also notice that the mesh becomes more edged while stretching. Unfortunately this issue occurs very often. Solution is to increase the density. For the hands, I always start with the fingers. Create the loop of 8 faces, starting from the base of the finger and ending in the place of the fingernail. Then insert 3 edge loops in the hinge areas. And one additional loop in between, in order to better conform with the shape. Now connect the central two faces between the middle of each finger and make a loop all the way around the hand. Then make a loop around the thumb and then start filling hands with polygons. If the hands was made separately from the wrists and you have to connect them, you will probably face the issue that they don't have the same amount of edges to be connected. In our case, the hands has 20 edges and the wrists only 10 edges. What we need to do is to make a polygon reduction. But please, don't collapse the edges. We don't need triangles where the hand bends. Instead, I recommend using diamond polygons. Diamond polygons are the usual polygons. But the only thing is that they change the direction of the wireframe.
Now we still have too many edges on the hands. And another thing we could do is loop the sides of the hands back on itself. As a result, the hands and the wrist have the same amount of key edges, so now we can connect them. I am not going to retopologize the toes, because the technique is exactly the same as with the hands. And in most cases characters wear shoes, so I will skip this part. Now I would like to talk about the cloths. This is the place where every animator and trigger struggles most of the time. It's very important to have the correct wireframe, otherwise we will have artifacts and intersections in the places of deformation. I will show you a few examples of retopology and explain the difference. On the first example we have exactly the same wireframe as the body mesh has. All I did is just extruded base mesh in order to have space between body and cloth and deleted unnecessary faces. Of course cloth can be different, but the basic idea is to try to make the loops in the same places with the under mesh. Again, this can mimic the appearance of the muscles moving beneath the cloth. This is the best approach, because when we copy skin weights from body to cloths, the deformation will be exactly the same. On the second example, I've made slightly different topology. It has approximately the same wireframe density and poly count. However, the loops doesn't follow the muscle lines. This is what people do in production very often. And this is not the worst scenario, because in most animations we won't see much difference comparing to the first example. Sometimes the work in the company is divided between few artists, and everyone has his own modeling workflow. This is why the wireframe on the body and cloth can be completely different. In extreme poses like this, we start seeing polygon intersections, mostly in the area of the buttocks. The reason for that is lack of polygons. If you cannot follow the shape of the muscle lines, my advice would be to increase the density of the deformation area. In this example we have a more dense wireframe. The plus is that it will better stick to the shape of the body. The minus is that the poly count is a bit higher. So if the poly count is not a problem, I would consider using this method in some cases. If we look at the extreme pose, we see that the cloths align perfectly with the base mesh, and we don't have any intersections. In this final example, we have a very low res wireframe. This is what we want to be avoided, because this type of wireframe causes a lot of issues. Looking at the extreme pose, we see that the body mesh is penetrating through the cloth. In this case, it would be the nightmare for those who do skiing and rigging. The above methods are used if you have a different types of the clothes in the game and you can change them, but if you have just one set of clothes, I'd rather delete the polygons on the body mesh, which are hidden under the cloth. Another important aspect is try to delete the inner faces for the clothes if they will not be visible in the game. This will save a lot of time for those who do skinning. Sometimes the inner faces cannot be deleted and that's the moment where people make a huge mistake. They start collapsing the inside edges to reduce the poly counts. What we get is what we talked about earlier when the inside faces start to go through the outer faces. This is almost impossible to fix while skinning weights. To sum up, I would like to give you advices for building correct retopology. It's always a good practice to avoid triangles and angons and try to stick with quads. The reason it's better to avoid them is because they cause an issue while rigging. 
mainly causing areas to deform badly. Triangles and angons cannot always be avoided. So what you should do is put them in places where they are hidden or where they will not deform too much. If I find a triangle in my model, I try to do my best to remove it. Just in cases when the model is symmetrical, please pay attention to that. Even small offset can do a bad trick while doing skinning and building a skeleton. The mirror tool will not work properly if the model is not symmetrical. Always avoid the helical edge loops that usually come from the outer topology tools. Please check the loops using the loop cut tool. So that's all guys. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions I would be happy to answer them.